Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create enemies. This is a little bit tricky. You might have to pause and watch this um, a number of times and go back and take a look at things. But we're going to try to create some patrolling enemies on another platform. So first thing, we need to go in and create this here. I've already done this here. I've made a very simple animation. Um, I've just created something where the mouth is just slightly changed along with the legs. So those are the only two things in the animation. I've got it set to loop, so it's just going to go back and forth from this to this. So you can see it's just like that. Really simple um, animation. So I've already put that in. And now if I go and let me just save this here. And if I try to run this then you can see that there my sprite moves but notice it's moving along with my character so it's actually following the right and left arrow keys and I don't want it to do that because I want to have a separate roaming enemy that has nothing to do with my control keys for my character so when you do this you have to go in and scroll down here and you're going to uncheck default controls so when you do that and we preview this now if I press my left and right arrows you can see that that enemy sprite is not moving anywhere and that's what I want for now so there that is working as expected now basically the way you can create a patrolling enemy is to put up invisible walls or invisible sprites on both ends of say a platform and then what it will do is it will go down and hit this invisible wall and when it sees that invisible wall and hits it it's going to bounce back and go the other way and then it's going to just keep going back and forth so the principle behind it is really quite simple but it does involve some complexity so um, what we need to do is we need to add a sprite that we're not going to see it will be invisible um, so I'm just gonna pick red here and let me just put this in like so just so I can see it during gameplay and I can crop that there and just close that now I can see it here I'm just gonna rename this we'll call it uh, fence so there so I've got that right there and then I want one on the other side so if I want the same thing on the other side and actually just before I do that I'm just gonna go down to here and I've got initially visible here I don't want it to be visible so I'm gonna uncheck this and I'm gonna have it set like that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab it over here and just pull it in. And that way I can have one on this side. It's got exactly the same characteristics. So there, picture it. Our enemy sprite is going to go back and forth in between those. Now how we set that up is a little bit challenging. So let's go into the event sheet and figure this out. So we are going to go into our layout actually we got to go back in and we got to do something with our enemy sprite we're gonna click on this and we're gonna go to instance variables think of it like a variable holding a value at a certain instant at one instant it could be zero the next instant it could be one um, think of it like that we're gonna create an instance variable basically indicating whether it's going right or left. So we could say if it's going left, it's zero, and going right, it's equal to one. So we could do that here. If I click on instance variable, I'm gonna add new instance variable, and let's call it uh, patrol, and it's of type number, and let's say the initial value is equal to one. So I'm gonna click on okay, and there. 
we have an instance variable called patrol. It is of type number. It is a number, and initial value is equal to zero. So there, I've got that set. So now, when I go to the event sheet, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that when the patrol, I'm going to go next, and when that instance variable, so if I go down here, compare instance variable, I'm going to go next, when it's equal to zero, let's have it go to the left. So equal to zero, I'm going to go done. So when it's equal to zero, we want it to go left. We have to put in that action. So I'm going to go add action here. And I'm going to go patrol next. And if I just type in here SIM, I can find simulate control. So I want simulate control next. I want it to go left. It defaults to left here, and that's what I want. So I'm going to click done. So there. Now notice when I built the sprite, it was actually pointing left. So just like we mirrored and not mirrored our main character, let's do the same here since we're right here. We're going to go add action. We're going to go patrol. And we're going to say that set mirrored. And we're going to go not mirrored when it's going to the left. So there. So when it's equal to 0, the instance variable, it is going to go left, and it's not going to be mirrored. Now we got to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to go when the patrol, and we go check the instance variable. When it's equal to 1, we want it to go right. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to tell it I want you to go simulate. So we'll go simulate. We want it to go right. So there, um, we've got that. Now when it goes to the right, we do want it to be flipped. We want it to be mirrored. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go patrol character and set mirrored. Next, we want it to be mirrored when it goes that way. So there, that's done. So there, let's go save this here. And let's go take a look and see what happens if we run it like this. So there, it's going to the left. And it just keeps going to the left. So that was the initial condition. The thing is, is, we didn't really talk about the walls at all. So we got to go into the event sheet, and we need to incorporate those fences that we put up, because the fences is what's going to contain that enemy. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to go to add event here, and we're going to say when the patrol comes in collision with. So when it collides with an object, we're going to go next, and that object is the fence. So when it collides with the fence, then we're going to do something. Now, this is the first time we've used something called a sub-event. We're going to do two sub-events here. To do that, you got to be putting your mouse in the right spot. You're going to put your mouse here. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go Add a sub event. So again, let's just go back here. You're going to go here, add sub event. And what we're going to say is that when the patrol is equal to, so we're going to go down here and we're going to compare instance variable. We're going to go next. And when it's equal to 0, we're going to click Done. Then what we're going to do is basically we're going to say when it hits the wall and the patrol is equal to 0, we're just going to change it so that it's equal to 1. So if I click on here, 
I'm going to say if it's equal to 0 when it hits the wall, then I am going to go down and set the value of the instance variable. I'm going to change it. So I'm going to go set value. I'm going to go next. And I want to change it to 1. So it was 0, but now I'm going to change it to 1. So there, if it hits the wall and the patrol instance variable is equal to 0, I'm going to change it to 1. Now be careful, the next one, I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go add another sub event. This one is different. I'm going to use something called else. And we're going to learn about the else statement in other programming languages. Basically, what it's saying is if it's not that condition, it's another condition. In other words, it's else. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to search for else. So oh, there we go. It's right there. I'm going to go else and next. Now, basically what I'm saying is, if it's equal to 0, the instance variable, we're going to set it to 1. Otherwise, we're going to take the patrol. So we're going to go patrol next. And we're going to set the value of the instance variable equal to 0. So if it hits the wall and it's equal to 0, we're going to change it to 1. Else, if it's not, then we're going to set it back to zero. So if we've done everything right, let's just save this here. We've done a lot. Let's just go in and see if this works. So if we click on preview, there we go. So it's hitting the invisible wall. Then it goes and goes the other direction. I can make my viewport window a little bit bigger so you can see this here. But you can see it's performing exactly as expected. So now I could do something like I had my main character jump over to that platform. And he has to stay away from that enemy. Maybe if he touches that enemy, um, he dies or changes health condition or loses a life, whatever it is you want to do when you're building a game. So that's it for this video. Good luck inserting enemies into your game. That's it, and we'll talk to you next.